this way, folks. See the wonder of the century, the miracle of the age. Moving pictures, a fabulous wedding of art and science, invention and imagination. Right this way, folks. Enjoy romance, adventure, thrills, excitement. See the beautiful heroine betrayed by the evil villain. Does she evade him? Does she escape? The wonder of the century, the miracle of the age, moving pictures. What did you say they were? A fabulous new invention, my friend. Pictures that move. Don't fool us. Would I lie to you? Well, how much does it cost to get in? A nickel. Five cents for the experience of a lifetime. Would you like to go in? Uh, no. Uh, no, thanks. Maybe some other time. Any time. How about a nice hot dog for the gentleman, eh? Moving pictures right this way, ladies and gentlemen. The show will be starting any minute. See your movie, folks. The wonder of the world. Excuse me. Do they really move? Why don't you see for yourself? Uh, I sure like to, but, uh... That's all right. You're alone with the nickel. You mean it? I trust you. Mama! Let him in. For free? For free. Fine businessman. Go right in, young man. I really appreciate it. And I'll pay you back. Sure. Sure. Where's the ticket? Um, I said, uh... It's okay. For free? Papa says. Okay, hey, the cat. you for the last time, Mr. Kessler. You have a contract with the Combine to show our pictures only. No independence. The next time this happens, you will lose your license. Get that film off the machine. Now, no, just a minute. Hey, you can't do that. Kessler, nothing personal, just business. Thank you for helping us, but you didn't have to. After what you'd done for me? Me? What did I do? You let me in to see my first moving picture, and you trusted me. See, Mama? For a nickel, I made a friend. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Mr. Kessler. Yes? What was all that talk about the combine? Oh, the combine. The combine. They control everything that has to do with the movies. The right to make them, the equipment, and the right to show them. If you don't do business with them, you don't do business. They're... Ow, watch what you're doing, will you? Sorry. So, tell me, how did you come by a name like Johnny Edge? Oh, uh, they... says my father was a gambler. <laughs> at least that's what they tell me at the orphan's home. You never knew your parents? My mama, she left me there just after I was born. That's horrible. I guess she didn't have much of a choice. Well, I better be moving along. Wait, wait. Stay, have a little tea and cake. Well, thank you. 
I'd like that. You know, I ain't never been around no family much before. You know, I can't get over them moving pictures. Them's just about the greatest thing I, I ever seen. Oh, yes. They will be someday. Now they're just a poor man's entertainment. For a nickel, a man could sit in a warm room and for 10, 20 minutes escape from his humdrum life. They're a cheap novelty, that's all. You're wrong. The time will come when they'll make pictures from great books, and rich people and poor people alike will sit together and watch for an hour. Why? Peter, it's enough. Eat. Can I work for you, Mr. Kessler? Johnny, I, I've got nothing for you to do. I'm a good worker. I couldn't pay you. But with all of us working together, we make 20, 25 dollars a week. Just enough to make a living. Yeah. Thanks, anyway. You know, I ain't ever had a day like this before. Ever. <laughs> I better get to the garage before they fire me. So? Would it be such a big loss? A son of mine can't find something better to do than fool around with cars? I like cars, Papa. Fine. Why do you always pick on him? What do you want from him? I want he should aspire to some kind of a profession, not be an auto mechanic. Why not? Is it written somewhere he should be a doctor or a lawyer? Leave him alone. Let him do whatever he feels like. Good morning, Peter. Esther. John, good morning. You got a good moving picture tonight? I hope so. Me too. You got a good moving picture. It's good for my business. I sell more hot dogs. <laughs> Mr. Kessler. Johnny. Johnny Ed. Oh, so nice to see you. Mama. Mama, look who's here, Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Mrs. Kessler. What's that? I've been thinking about this place all week. And yesterday it hit me. All those people sitting inside every night watching when they could be eating. Eating what? Candy. You buy it, two for a penny. Sell it for a penny a piece, 100% profit. That's not a bad idea. But people want candy, they come buy it right on the street. Uh, they buy it in there, they don't miss none of the movie. And the profit stays here. That's right. How about it, Mr. Kessler? We'll split it. Half for you, half for me. I'm in movies, not candy. Peter, let him talk. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Doris, go to school. Yes, Mama. You don't need my permission? You want to sell candy? You can sell it right here on the sidewalk. In there, I get to see the movies. Is that important to you, huh? Yeah. I'm a lot like you, Mr. Kessler. I feel there's a big future in moving pictures. And I want to be part of it. How did you buy that candy? Pounded kind of steaks all week over at Santos Carnival. I got that nickel, I mean. Keep it. I'll collect it when we make our first thing. We got a deal? We got a deal. <laughs> you won't be sorry, Mr. Kessler. You won't be sorry, I promise you. Brother, you know. 
Mama sent these down for you. She didn't have to go to no trouble? It's not a trouble. Thank you. Let me help you. Johnny, how long were you at the orphanage? Ran away when I was ten. Ten? What did you do? Scratched around. Messenger. Shoe shine boy. I've been a lot of things. Lumberjack, dishwasher. Worked the Carney's son. Really? See most of the country riding the rails. You've certainly led an exciting life. Most of the time, I was either cold or lonely or scared. This is exciting. I mean, being here with you folks, that's exciting. You've done so much more than I have. Maybe. You're just a kid still. You talk more better than I do anyway. Doris, did you forget to come back? Coming, Mama. If you like, um, I could help you talk better, teach you grammar. Would you? I'd sure appreciate it. And I can pay you, too. I don't want you to pay me. Mr. Pappas. Nice day, eh? Yeah, it sure is. No more snow, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Good morning. Morning. Johnny, would it interest you to know that last month's profits doubled and on Monday and Tuesday night tripled? <laughs> We're just getting started, Mr. Kessler. That's Kessler. right. <laughs> Good morning, Sally. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Anything for me? Yes, sir, right there. Oh, thank you. Come to the movie, sir. You bet, I will. Uh-huh. Johnny. There's an article on Conrad Stilben. I want you should read it. Oh, he's the one whose films you like so much, ain't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, isn't he? <laughs> Men like Griffith and Stilben are shaping the future of this business, Johnny. The audience is what more than the engineer's sweetheart. I see it in their faces when they come in here. There's that fellow from the combine. Well, I hope you have something decent today, Farnham. The latest release. The motorman's nephew. What's it going to be next week? The janitor's niece? <laughs> How long do I have to keep playing this garbage? Well, how long would you like to be in the business? Get the sweetheart film, Johnny. Can't your producers read? Haven't they ever heard of writers like Dickens, Victor Hugo, Dumas? Are you trying to tell us how to run our business, Mr. Kessler? Well, somebody should. You've got a glorious invention in your hand. And what do you do about it? Nothing. Uh, What's the use of talking? Here's your money. By the way, your film rental's gone up. To what? Twelve fifty a reel. Twenty-five dollars a picture. I hardly take in that much money. Lucky you're doing very well. Selling candy and soda pop, showing advertisements before the picture. That's why you're raising me. You're afraid I might get a little bit ahead. If I'm doing better, it's not because of your pictures. How's he supposed to make a living at 1250 a reel? Oh, those people always manage. Those people? What do you mean by those people? I simply meant that they're very good at business. Kessler, how many Nickelodeons would you say there are in this country? Oh, uh, four, five thousand, maybe. Twenty-five dollars a crack, that's a lot of rental fees. <laughs> it sure is. 
I hate arithmetic. Arithmetic? I hate worrying about money. You know, you should be making pictures, not showing them. That's all I need, a new business. Well, somebody's making a lot of money. Probably a hundred times more than you. So does the president. You see me running for office? What do you say we go down to New York for a few days? What for? To see what you have to do to make a movie. Are you serious? Johnny, I got enough trouble with the Nickelodeon. Bigger ones I don't need. You make your own pictures. You don't have to take that guff from the combine. So? I'll take the guff. Well, wait. What was all that talk before? About knowing what audiences really want. All them great books you want to see up there on the screen. A daydream. A foolish daydream. You want to know the truth about you, Mr. Kessler? I'm a failure. Certified. I've been in more business than you can count, and I failed in every one of them. Ladies' foundations, wax candles, wax phonograph records, wax flowers. I got buried in wax. You want me to go on? That's your wonderful Mr. Kessler. You can try again. I don't want to try anymore, Johnny. I want to sleep nights. The Nickelodeon's all I got. It's the only thing that's ever worked for me. This will work, too. Johnny, you're a boy. You've got ambition. I'm just a man of 47 years old who's tried too many times. Will you try again with me? For the last time. I said no. You hear me? I said no. Mrs. Kessler, don't you think I'm right? I have faith in my husband, Johnny. So I let him decide. You can keep the grammar book. You've done enough for me already. I've been a crumb my whole life. And I have finally found something I want to do. I can't just forget it. What? You take care of yourself, huh? You've been great. Whether you're good or bad for me. But we're going to New York. Are you sure they're expecting us? Positive. Move closer. How do I look? Relax. Come on. You look like a big businessman. They'd be very impressed. Let's get that buckboard rolling now, huh? Take it up. Watch the creases in the background. Keep it Back up. Back up. You're jealous. You're jealous. Come on. Come on. You're jealous. That's it, Paul. That's it, Paul. Favor her, too. That's it. 
said to be here at 3 o'clock. Mr. Slade is a very busy man and a very important man, but you'll find all that out very soon. Okay, now. All right, now, let's get ready for the next scene. Yeah. Mike comes by now. Get the girl who plays the daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Joe, Everybody watch your lip. Come on, Johnny. Johnny. Let's move the camera over here. Johnny, look who's too there. Too much, too much. How's this, Mr. Cosby, 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 the director. Don't sing. Go get the wig on. All right. Oh, yes, pretty good. That's it. Next to your mother, right there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, now. Mr. Stillman. Yes? Property. Excuse me. Property. You don't know what this moment means to me, what your movies mean to me. I've studied every one of them. Well, don't study this one. This is trash. Nothing you can do can ever be trash. Thank you. May I watch? Sure, sure, by all means. Thank you. All right, now, this is what we're gonna do. Have you tasted this coffee? All right. Now, the scene is uh, good against evil, all right? Hello. Got a match? Uh, yeah. How? All right. The daughter has decided she's gonna give herself to the captain so they can all get on the ship. Works better on a cigarette. Out. This is the essence. Music. Go. All right, roll the camera. You got a name? Uh, Johnny Edge. Edge. And Dulcie Warren. Dulcie. Now more pity. Now more, more emotion. I don't think I've ever heard a name like that before. It means sweet, gentle. Oh. Come on, you come with me. You an actor? Me? <laughs> no. My uh, associate and I are setting up movie production. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, now, uh, cut! You must be an actress. Mr. Van Els, we're ready for you now. I'm uh, starring in this picture. Oh. Guess I should have known. All right. I want all the people to Mr. Red! And Mr. Slade, we'll see you, see you now. Be right there. Uh, I gotta go. Listen, I'm having a party tonight. Why don't you stop by? Don't bother me now. 16 East 12th Street, second floor, apartment 26. All right, everybody All right. ready? Thank you. Action. No, face, face. Mr. Kessler? It's not right. They're ready for us now. Could somebody get me somebody to make it right? Well, all extras on the set, don't right, you? Listen, do me a favor. Let me stay out of this shot, okay? What's the trouble? No trouble. I just think I'm on to something. You got a story? Actors? A director? We're working on all that. Uh, what's an average two really cost to make, Mr. Slade? Well, if you're smart, know how to cut corners, maybe eight, nine hundred dollars. But be sure you understand one thing, Cantor. Kiss. Whatever. You can't make a film without our okay. Everything you need, you get from us. First, your license, later on your camera, your raw stock, and your rent space from us, you understand? Then when you finish the picture, you bring it to us to distribute. Well, you gentlemen sure control everything, don't you? We own the patents. What's it cost to buy a license, Mr. Slade? A thousand dollars. You want one? Work it out with Farman. Well. Want it? Or are you wasting our time? 
You'll hear from us. Will you? Get You're on the board. Back. Get the background rolling. Action. Johnny. Johnny, how are we ever going to make a movie? We don't have enough money to buy a license, let alone production costs. We'll get it. We'll get it. And actors, a story. We'll get that, too. Sure. Sure, we'll also get in over our heads. Look, Mr. Kessler, enjoy yourself tonight. Get some dinner, take in a show. I just made myself a terrific contact. A big star. She's going to introduce me to a lot of important people. Well, I wish you luck. First minute I saw you, I knew it'd be like this. Uh, who's the picture of? Boyfriend? Read the inscription. Cousin Dulcie. Love Craig. <laughs> he an actor? Are you kidding? Craig Warren, he's the biggest star on Broadway. If you never even heard of Craig Warren, who the hell are you? Well, uh, I don't go to the theater much. Oh, and you call yourself a producer? Well, I'm not a producer. Not yet, but I will be. So you lied to me. A little. I hate being lied to. I mean, I saw that cap, I saw that suit, but I said to myself, maybe he's an important eccentric. Hey, wait a minute. The only reason I'm here is because maybe you figured I could do something for you? Did it feel like that? No. Look, you're here because I wanted you to be here. But if you could have helped me, I wouldn't have minded it a bit. Yeah? Well, how come a big movie star like you needs me to help her, huh? I'm an extra. I sell candy. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been some contact you made last night, huh? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Mr. Kessler, you know who I met last night? Who? Craig Warren's cousin. You know who Craig Warren is? Yes, I saw him last night in the play, The Bandit. He's some actor. Oh, well, how's the play? Oh, Johnny, what a movie that would make such a conflict, such a sense of history. Well, maybe we should buy it. With what? Johnny, you talk like a millionaire. 
You've got to learn how to crawl before you can walk. Okay, so, so we start small. But listen to me. You do have enough money. Uh, enough to make a two-reeler, at least. Oh, where? Sell the Nickelodeon. What, are you crazy? The Nickelodeon's all I got. Oh, come on. I saw what you were like in that studio yesterday. When you were watching that, that look in your eyes. Oh, you were so excited. It was, it was like you were in love. Maybe I was. But we don't always get what we love. But you can. We can. Oh, Johnny. Oh, why not? You got the ideas. You got paper, the imagination. Paper, paper you know what's in the people's hearts when they come to buy a ticket to the movies? Johnny. It's such a big step. Okay, thanks a lot. Look, you tell people the movies are a magic carpet ride. Okay, so let's get on it. You and me, together. What do you say? I got a tough road with my family. whether you sell the place or not. I'm not going to New York. Marky, I'm not wild about the idea either, but a family stays together. You're coming with us and you'll learn the movie business. I got a good job. I'm making five bucks a week and maybe someday I'll have my own garage. What kind of a dream is that? It's my dream. Why should I have to live yours or Johnny's? Mark, please don't. Doris. How do you feel about it, darling? Papa, I don't know. Whatever you and Johnny want. Excuse me. Mark! Esther. You do what you feel you must. And if it doesn't work out, we'll find a way to get along. What could that be this late at night? Mrs. Kessler. Something wrong, Mr. Puppis? No, no, no. Excuse me, I just want to talk to Pete, huh? Come, come, come right up. Thank you. Hey, good evening, Pete. George. Have a seat, Mr. Puppis. Thank you very much. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thank you. I only stay for one minute. Pete, I make it quick. When I first come to America, I just a poor little Greek boy. But I figure work hard. Save a few dollars, maybe. Go back to old country someday. Be a big man. I got good business. But you got better. You put movie in one and a machine, money come out the other. <laughs> eh? Pete, I want you to sell me your Nickelodeon. George, did Johnny put you up to this? He tell me you go to New York to make more pictures. <laughs> and Johnny's in such a hurry. And such a salesman. Oh, he makes me feel young again. George, you've got $3,000? I got $2,700. Well, you bought yourself a Nickelodeon. And I'll make the movie to show in it. And we make contract right now, huh? And now, I didn't think you'd have a trick on it. Why not? I have a bottle of Uzo downstairs. No, 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 I'll stop you. Not too much, huh? Okay, George. Johnny. You frighten yes, me. Yes, you. You want the movie so much, Why? it's like a, a fire inside you. I don't know who it's going to burn. special bottle, didn't I? To launch such a special company? <laughs> what do you call that size, young man? It's called a Magnum, Papa. Magnum. Magnum. I like that sound. Johnny, we're looking for a name for the company. Magnum Productions. I like it, Peter. It's very impressive. How about that, Johnny? To Magnum Productions the price of a ticket, we will bring the world its dreams. May we float in champagne forever. May we pay tonight's check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, special announcement. 
Peter J. Kessler is already checked in a partner. Johnny, if it wasn't for you, for your dreams, your enthusiasm, we wouldn't be here tonight. I'm giving you 10% of the company. If I get rich, you get rich. If I go broke, I go broke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thanks to all of you. Because I guess you know that you all give me something that's worth a whole lot more than 10%. You give me a family. Adriano? Good evening, Mr. Warren. I have your table. Excuse me. Dulcie! Johnny! Oh, what a surprise. Boy, you look uh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Where you been? Been calling and I left a message. I tried to talk. I know, I know. I got all your messages. I, uh. Well, it's just been such an insane week. Johnny, my whole life has changed. You see the man sitting over there with Craig? That's Armand de Rochefort, the, the famous French playwright? Well, he's got a new play opening here next month, and, and Craig arranged for me to read for him, and guess what? What? He promised me the lead, Johnny the lead. For sure? Of course, for sure. He's announcing it tomorrow. <laughs> That's great, Dulcie. <laughs> That's great. Listen. I want you to meet my friends, the Kesslers. Oh, well, maybe some other time. I really should go join Craig and Armand. Well, when am I going to see you? Johnny, I'll, I'll give you a call just as soon... Well, as soon as things settle down, okay? Isn't that Craig Warren's cousin? Yeah. Johnny, if we can ever afford to buy the bandit, isn't getting Craig Warren to star in it our next step? Uh-huh. You made a good contact, Johnny. Hey, Johnny, she's some looker. You think so, huh? Yeah, I think so. Waiter. Please, more champagne. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. When a woman irons at three in the morning, something's wrong. What is it? I think he loves her, Mom. Just don't let him. Johnny's too old for you. I want to go to Boston and live with Anna Irma. I can start college there. Is that bad? We'll talk to Papa. Now you go to bed and I'll finish the dress. What happened? He, he laughed at me. 
Who? Who laughed at you? Armand. I didn't get the part. He just wanted to go to bed with me. How the hell with him? Forget him. Forget him, Dulcie. He said I had no talent. He said I'd never amount to anything. He lied, Dulcie. Listen to me. He lied. Remember what the cameraman said? You're the girl with those incredible eyes. You're gonna be a big star, Dulcie Warren. Listen to me. Believe it. I promise you, you're gonna be a big star. Oh, Johnny, I love you. Okay, Bruce. Action. Okay, ask her if she wants a shoe shine. Okay, now go and see the baby. Maybe the baby. Maybe the baby wants a shoe shine. He hits you over the head. Now try to make friends. He hits you again. Now you don't like it. You don't like that. Grab the baby. Nurse, call the cop. <laughs> he's a very funny man. Yeah, he's going to be a big star. Oh, he's going to be up there with London and Keaton and all of those guys. But he doesn't need me for these two reelers. He needs a comedy director. Come on, Peter. You tell everybody what a great director I am. Let me do something good, eh? I know, I know. But you've got to be patient, comrade. Patient. You're going to direct the bandit. When? Soon. I'm putting it together. And I'm getting Craig Warren to start it. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you happy now? Oh, I look forward to it. <laughs> Mr. Kessler? Good. Mr. Slade would like to see you in the office. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. You wanted to see me? Oh, yeah, Kessler. How much money have you made this year? Why well, ask? The Combine has all the figures. Well, so far, you're projecting $18,000. Well, doesn't the Combine want us to make a profit from our pictures? Apparently, it doesn't satisfy you. We have information that you just acquired the rights to a Broadway play, The Bandit. Yes, and it'll make a marvelous picture. Mm. How uh, long will it be? Oh, probably about uh, five, six reels. That's what I thought. Kessler, the Combine doesn't want Magnum to make any more pictures. Why not? Under paragraph six of the contract, we hereby revoke your license to engage in the manufacture thereof. What, what does that mean? It means you're in violation of your contract to manufacture two real films and two real films only. Does that mean that I can't make... Absolutely not. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, I'm in a lot of trouble. I'll be right back. I'm going to do this first, so get everything ready. Conrad, okay. have you yeah? seen Johnny? No, since this morning. Oh. Anything wrong? No, but i got to find him. If you see him, tell him I'm looking for him. Sure, sure. Forget your promise. If this works, Dulcie, you play the sister. Come in. Oh, Craig, excuse me. Dulcie, dearest, how prompt you are. Craig, I'd like you to meet Johnny Edge. He's with Magnum Productions. Sounds like a movie company. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Edge. Please have a seat. Thank you. You know my leading lady, Astrid James? Ma'am. How do you do? I must warn you, young man, I don't like the flickers. And I certainly won't act in one of those galloping tintypes. Mr. Warren, 
We just bought the movie rights to the bandit. For you. Well, I'm impressed, Mr. Edge. And flattered. But I remain firmly convinced that movies are a bad joke. They're a disgrace to the acting profession. Well, you're both entitled to your own opinion. But I think you should know that Sarah Bernhardt, the great French actress, is doing a moving picture right now based on the life of Queen Elizabeth. Sarah? Did you hear that? There's something else I think you should know. Dulcie? It's called a close-up, Craig. It was just invented by D.W. Griffith. Now, imagine if you would, that love scene with you and the Contessa. You rush in. You pull off your mask. You look at her. The camera focuses on your face and yours alone. It catches every little expression in your eyes. Craig Warren would share his passion with every woman in every movie house in the world. The camera would only be on me. That's right. After all, what is the bandit without Craig Warren? <laughs> Mr. Slade, I ask you to reconsider. We got Craig Warren to star in it. Conrad Silver to direct it. It'll be a great picture. Most impressive, Kessler, but the Combine doesn't want six reelers. We only want two reelers. People will not sit for that long a time. You give them something worth sitting for, they will. People get bored, worry about their eyesight. Movies are an infant art. You force producers to keep making these two reelers. Why, 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 pictures will be a forgotten fad in two years. The Combine is not interested in art. Good day, gentlemen. Nobody can dictate to me what picture I should make. It's a law against monopoly. You're in restraint of trade. All right. Go ahead and sue us. I will. That doesn't change the fact that you're finished in this business. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Slade. Magnum Pictures will make the bandit with or without your license. Magnum Pictures will be out in the street next month without stage space, without a camera, without film. Now get out. <laughs> What did we get ourselves into? What are we gonna do? I think I know of a way we can make the bandit. How? Blow up the combine? Make it in California. Ca California? Peter, listen. There are a few small companies already shooting out there. You got beautiful mountains. You got cheap land. You got sunshine 350 days out of the year. And it's close to the Mexican border. The combine's never gonna know what crosses it. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see. And there'd be plenty of space for the for the action sequences. Right. Johnny. How long have you been waiting to spring this on me? Since I played uh, poker with Stillman Farm and some of the other fellows. You know something, Johnny? Esther's gonna break my head. <laughs> Johnny, what was that you were saying? Uh, I said uh, that we're going to make the picture in California. We're to make the right decision. Good night, my dear. You're getting better and better every day. Thank you. See you, Johnny. Will you come on in here? Get away from that door, Delcia. You try to leave, I'll scream this whole damn building down. Scream. We've got nothing to talk about. Let me out of here. You dumb hick! Oh, I'm dumb, but I'm sure not blind. Now, look. I need Connie Stillman, so I'm being nice to him. But he never laid a hand on me. I'm just teasing him so he'll help me. Oh, boy. I don't understand you, Dulcie. I really don't. Oh, 
Oh, Johnny, I am scared to death. Now, that man can teach me how to act. He can keep me from making a fool of myself. But you're the only one for me. Oh, you're the only one. Lock the door. Double for you, don't you think, Craig? He rides well. How is it? Pretty good. They're good, all right. Be on the phone. Come on, let me see you. Really, really frightened. You're terrified. You don't know who the guy is. Is he going to shoot you or what? Mark. That's right. Now take the gun to the back of the coach. Peter, this is going to be a very exciting picture. Yes. I only wish our wonderful star looked as good as his double does on a horse. He's a very handsome man. Peter, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be ready for that star of yours, huh? Very good. Mark! Mark! Yes, Papa? What are you doing there? I'm working on the oil pan. I made your children's assistant, so you'd like to direct. I'm no good at it. You're not even trying. Pa, if I wasn't your son, would you ever in a million years think I could be a director? Don't get warned. Mr. Warren, we're all set to rehearse the love scene. Rehearse? I've played this scene over 300 times. I don't care if you play it three million times. We have to rehearse. Do you mind? No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Zack, uh, give me your gun belt. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Okay. Action! Ramon! Oh, my lovely Contessa. To find you at last in the wilderness, a wilderness that parches my very soul. Hold it, hold it. Let's try it again, eh? This time with a little more feeling. A little more feeling? Yes, more feeling. What you're saying and how you say it is important. This is insanity. There's no one out there that can even hear me. True. But the camera will pick up every thought, every emotion. You see, that's the difference between stage and film. We were close. If it isn't here, it's not going to be on the screen. Mr. Stillman, are you going to teach me how to act? I would like to. But I get the feeling you're not going to listen. Mr. Kessler? Either he leaves, or I do. Why won't you listen, Mr. Warren? I beg your pardon. You're supposed to be a professional. You keep persuading. You don't put any feeling in your scenes. If you don't like what Mr. Silver's doing, leave. Crank it up, Eddie. Craig, now you can't just walk out. Oh, can't I? Are you coming, Astrid? I, uh, like the weather here. Judas. Now leave the belt with the prop man. Peter, go after him. Apologize. We're three days into the picture. Yes. And one day is worse than the next. Well, what are we going to do? Start over? That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make a decent movie of the bandit. You're quite a guy, Peter. Not too many producers will have the courage to fire Craig Warren, no matter how bad he is. What's your name, young man? Zach, sir. 
Jack Lark. Where are you from? Oklahoma, sir. Uh, let me see without the mustache. Are you an actor? Well, not me, sir. I'm, I'm just a cowboy. Have you ever thought of putting the two things together? And being a cowboy actor? No, sir. Well, think about it. say he photographs very well. He's strong and manly. The girls will like him. Peter, you've got a great eye for talent. The audience will love that face. Who needs Craig Warren? Well, that's right. Without Craig Warren, nobody will hear of the bandit. Besides, the Combine will never let you show it. We'll find a way. How? Oh. They'll bust up any theater that runs it, especially when they hear you're suing them for restraint of trade. He's right, Peter. And I've been sweating about that lately, too. But I think I got a way to figure it out around it. You see? My Johnny comes up with ideas, not just complaints. What do you think, Johnny? I think we got to open the picture with a friendly exhibitor, someone we can trust. Now, George Pappas, he just bought a theater in New York. He bought a theater in New York already? He's doing very good. Even if Pappas is willing to take a chance, the Combine will destroy the print before you ever get it to the theater. Then we'll hire protection, Mark. We'll send two prints to New York. One by train, the other all hand carry. Good idea, Johnny. Very good. Johnny, beautiful job. Thanks, Joe. It's in your hands He's going to be okay. Why don't you come to New York with me? You mean for the opening? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? You're in the movie, and you're good in the movie. Well, Johnny, I'm so nervous, I'd fall apart. <laughs> good. I'm nervous, too. We could be nervous together. I couldn't handle it. OK. I got a better idea. Hmm. Why don't we get married? Married? Married tonight. We could drive to Mexico, get married tonight. You're serious? Yeah, I'm serious. We can have a home. We can have a family. Kids, it'd be great. Those marriage vows kind of scare me. You afraid it's going to hurt your career? Oh, come on. What kind of thing is that to say? Look, you want success as much as I do. Besides, I saw what it did to my parents. Look, why don't we see what happens with the picture? If it's a flop, you may not even want to marry me. <laughs> if it's a flop, will you want to marry me? Hmm? I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Oh, it's only beginning, Mr. Pappas. This line, it goes around the block. You know, with crowds like this at Combine, they won't dare stop us. Well, I hope you're right. Come on. Here comes trouble. I want to know what's going on around here. Some kind of a riot? No, no, no. It's just a few people waiting to see a movie. Well, you'll have to be clearing them off. They're blocking the traffic. And how am I supposed to do that? Why don't you open up now and let them in? Well, it's 7 o'clock. The picture doesn't start till 8. Start it now. And what do I do at 8? Show it again. Just keep showing it as long as the people keep showing up. That's mighty fine thinking, young fellow. Uh, how are they going to follow the story if I let them in in the middle? Well, I guess they can just stay until it gets to the part where they came in. Start selling the tickets. Hey, oh. All right, start selling tickets, then. You can all start buying your tickets. Hey. <laughs> no stop shows. I never heard of anything like that. Hello? Peter? Johnny? How's everything? Johnny, this is a long-distance call. It costs money. What's with the picture? Well, I collected $40,000 so far. 
What's that? I said I collected $40,000 so far. You must have a bad connection. Peter, will you listen to me? I just showed the banner to distributors and exhibitors, and they all love the picture. Every one of them put down deposits on rental. Johnny, is George there? Let me talk to him. He doesn't believe me. You tell him. Hello, Peter. George, is Johnny drunk? He hadn't touched the drop. Peter, you got a smash hit. What? Say it again. I said you got a smash hit. A smash hit. Mama, we got a hit? What? A oh, smash hit. Oh, oh, oh George. <laughs> Kessler, that arrogant peddler from Albany, suing the Combine, breaking all our rules and getting away with it. Well, the business is changing, Mr. Slade. DeMille, Zucker, Fox, they're all fighting us. We'll survive, but I'm going to make sure that Kessler doesn't. We'll let him break his back building up his business, and when he does, if he does, I'm going to take everything he has away from him. You gotta make a war picture, Peter. I don't care what Wilson says, we're gonna be in it. I will not take sides of this war. Match it up. Listen to me, Peter. We've got to help the Allies. I told you before, I don't want to hear another word about a war picture. Mark, what is this? More IOUs? Who gave them to you? Who's going to pay for them? You? Gambling, carrying on with those tramp actresses of yours. If you came to the studio and worked, we wouldn't have time for this. He does his job. I told you a hundred times, don't plead my case. He has a right. He earns his money. What do we need a war picture for? We've got one right here. Ah, uh, you talk to him, Esther. He's being unreasonable. I was born in Germany. I will not make a picture called the Hun. Peter, you left Germany when you were a child. A country is like a mother. Uh -huh. Whatever happens, she never stops being your mother. Yeah, well, right now your mother is wearing a spiked helmet and bayoneting babies. <laughs> My brave son, the warrior, sitting here in Hollywood drinking, you can afford to be a hero. Yeah, well, actually, I, I tried to do a little bit more today. I went down to enlist. Mark! Did what? It's all right, Ma. They didn't take me. Why not, Mark? Heart murmur goes thumpity-thump every once in a while. You're right, Pop. I'm not perfect. Why do you always talk to him like that? I try to say the right thing. It always comes out wrong. Ah, don't let him get you down. You should have been his son, not me. He doesn't mean to hurt you, Mark. He loves you. He loves you. You're pulling his dream wagon. You got it all, Johnny. My father, the studio, and Dolphy. I should hate your guts. Claudine. Bonjour, monsieur. Come in, come in. Thank you. Doris back yet? 
They've just come from the station. I'll wait in the solarium, okay? Please. Hello, Johnny. Well, well. You look absolutely lovely. Thank you. If I go to some fancy Eastern college, will I come back looking like you? You don't have to, Johnny. Well, two years have certainly made some changes. The baby fat's gone, that's all. <laughs> you look great, too. Work must agree with you. <laughs> that's what Peter keeps telling me. How's Dulcie? Well, she's fine. Doing a film. Of course. She's wonderful. All the women imitate her. And the men are crazy about her. She'll be a big star someday, I'm sure. Well, we're certainly hoping. <laughs> How about you? Any boyfriends? Mm-hmm. Someone from school? No, a doctor. Serious? <sighs> he wants to marry me. Johnny! Good morning. You're just the type for Sunday breakfast. How about it? I'd like that, thank you. Good. I'll tell Esther. We're eating in the patio. It's good to have the family together again. And it's about time, young lady. Yes, Papa. Esther, is that another place? Johnny's staying for breakfast. I see Papa hasn't changed. He still eats in his shirt sleeves. Oh, that's because he doesn't want to spill gravy on his $100 suits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've missed home so much. You plan on staying? I don't know. Pardon, Monsieur Edge. There is a telephone call for you. You can take it in the solarium. Thank you. Excuse me. Hello. What? Look, who is this? Speak up, will you? Well, where is she? All right, I'm on my way. Oh, uh, Claudine, uh, will you tell them that uh, I... Uh, just tell them I had to leave, all right? Oui, monsieur. Claudine? Mademoiselle? Who's Mr. H talking to? It was about Mademoiselle Warren. Thank you. job she begged me can you hear me baby can you everything seemed fine but something went wrong wake up darling wake up Dulcie. Much better. You could go in and see her. Okay. Will it be in the papers? I took care of it. 
Guess I made another mess, didn't I? It's all cleaned up. What would I do without you? You feel it all right? Sure, fine. Whose baby was it? You know better than to ask that. Then why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? Why? What would you have done? Because I had a right to know. I didn't want to spoil things with us. That baby was half mine, Dulcie. You know how much I want family. You know how much I want kids. I just didn't want to share you with a kid. You didn't want that baby because you didn't want to be off the screen for a year. Isn't that right? You were probably thinking about your figure, too, huh? Admit it! Okay! You're right. Johnny, I've worked so hard to get this far. So you killed our baby? Well, what's the matter with you? I guess I can't get over it as easy as you can. We are finished, Dulcie. Oh, don't be silly. I mean it. We're through. Johnny, you don't know what you're saying. We stay together, we will tear each other apart. But you love me. You do. You love me. I'm in your blood, Johnny. I'm, I know you better than you know yourself. Goodbye, Dulcie. Johnny. You'll be back. You'll be back. You will, whenever I want you. One more time, huh? Right. Got a family? Kids? Two boys and a girl. Boys are big, girls pretty as a picture. Just like a mom. You got any kids? No, no, I don't. Ah, that's too bad. You don't know what you're missing. There's nothing like a family. We're in it! We're in it! War is declared! We're in the war! Oh, 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 Ain't it great? Oh, We're gonna right. hang the geyser. Oh, All right, you guys, belly up to the bar. Break the He took me. The army? Well, why didn't you tell me? You know me. I'm good at quick decisions. Are you in some kind of trouble? Sure. So is the whole world. Maybe we can all solve it together, huh? Dulcy Warren? For a woman like that? It's none of your business, Peter. Anything that has to do with my family is my business. <laughs> Okay, you want it straight? I feel like my guts have been torn out. You love her? No, I don't love her. Yes, I, I don't know. You've always been a scrapper, Johnny. On top of things, you're running away. To war? Well, am I wrong? Here, you keep these papers. It's my will and power of attorney to you. What for? 10% of Magnum. It'll be here waiting for you when you come back. Well, I'm not much good at goodbyes. So. Take care of yourself, Johnny. I don't want to lose you. Me neither. I don't have to say you're like a son. You are a son. Well, keep the studio going. The war will make the business boom. 
try to make him keep down expenses. Johnny. I'll make the hunt. Maybe it'll bring you home sooner. I'm tired, Peter. I'm going home. Excuse me. There's a gentleman here to see you, Mr. Kessler. He says he knows you. Send him in. Wonderful to see you again, sir. What brings you to California? Oh, just visiting. It's a nice place you have here. To John Edge to see Mr. Kessler. Must be new around here. Mr. John Edge to see Mr. Kessler. Yes, sir. You can go right in. You can park right in front there, sir. Mr. Edge. Yes. Oh, do come in. I'm Vera Montague, Mr. Kessler's secretary. Hello. How are you? How do you do? Hi. Uh, Mr. Kessler knows you're here. It'll just be a few more moments. He's completing a meeting. All right. I'll wait in Mrs. Kessler's office. Oh, Mrs. Kessler never comes to the studio anymore. Uh, why don't you just sit down? <laughs> no. I want to take care of these myself, Peter, before the end of the day. Don't give it another thought. Consider it done. John, you're back. You remember Henry Farnham? Sure. Well, welcome home. Thank you. Please go right in. I know Peter's waiting for you. I'm just down the hall. Uh, drop in anytime. Careful of that young man. He's terribly, terribly Johnny, bright. Johnny, Johnny. Will I see you tonight? Monday. Well, why did you let us know you're coming home today? Uh, how's the leg? It's fine. No problem. Get your Dr. Sandler. The best. <laughs> Look, I get to throw this stick away in a couple weeks anyway. Good. Another one of our brave soldiers, huh? Good friend of mine. Rocco Salvatore, Peter Kessler. Nice to meet you, sir. Anything Magnum can do, ask. Well, uh, you mind if I take a look around? You got a pretty impressive place here. Certainly. <laughs> Vera! Vera, see that Mr. Salvatore gets a tour of the studio. Thank you, Mr. Kessler. Pleasure. Sit down, Johnny. Johnny, it's so good to see you. Well! Hmm? What do you think? I think it looks like a museum. <laughs> Where'd all the money come from? We went public. Wall Street. You sold the company? 
I'm no fool. I kept control. With the family stock and yours, I still control 51%. Who got you into this? Farnham? Listen, Johnny, we misjudged him. You have no idea the connections he has. The banks, the insurance companies. Yeah, I'll bet. He used to be Charlie Slade's man. Remember what he did to you, Peter? He threw with Slade. Quit years ago. Even before we busted the combine. Well, what was I supposed to do? Run the whole thing myself? You were gone. I needed somebody. And Farnham's friends got me the money to build the biggest studio in Hollywood. <laughs> Is that so terrible? Be careful he doesn't steal it from you. Johnny! Johnny, you don't know what's been happening. It's just like you predicted. The war has changed everything. We're making 30 pictures a year. We have our own distribution system. Exchanges in every major city of the world. A thousand employees, Johnny. One thousand. All right, all right. Well, all right. I know what you're thinking. You uh, remember the banks looking down their noses at us. Jew peddler. The carny bum. Not anymore, Johnny. We're a big business. And we're getting bigger all the time. And who do I go to for a raise? Henry Farnham or the board of directors? Hey, come on. What are you sure about? Because you had nothing to do with it? Johnny. Tell me what's happening. Just get back and we're arguing? You need a rest. Take a holiday. We'll talk. I'm glad you're back, Johnny. It's gotta be like old times, huh? Can I never be like that again, Peter? I'm dumb, huh? <laughs> Listen, uh, Johnny, I've been thinking about that uh, offer you made me in a job at the studio. It's not for me. What are you gonna do, Rock? Well, Prohibition is coming, and I figure there's gonna be a lot of action and booze. <laughs> what, drinking it? Oh, selling it. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, you saved some of the good stuff for me, huh? You got it. See ya. Listen, uh, Johnny, you want me to stick around? Ah. Uh, I'll get a ride home. Take care. Right. That's the way it goes, Johnny. Peter decided the house needed redecorating. It was too old-fashioned. So we redecorated, and we spent a fortune. What's happened to him, Esther? I don't know, Johnny. Success, I suppose. You know, maybe you can bring him down to earth. I can't. Well, hail the family hero. How are you, Mark? A little hungover, actually. <laughs> Marky, go get dressed. What time is it, anyway? It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I suppose the studio will have to survive without me today. <laughs> See you around, Johnny. Poor Marky. He would have been happy working in the garage. Johnny! Hey. What, no hug? Of course. How are you? How are you? I'm all right. Don't have to ask about you. It's written all over you. No, I'm angry with you. Three letters in two years? Well, I'm not much of a correspondent. <laughs> How's school? I graduated with the highest honors. Mama, that looks true. Gonna marry that doctor? No, that ended a long time ago. There's so many men in the house, Johnny. She has a boyfriend for every night of the week. Mama, please. So? Am I wrong? Have room for one more? Are you sure Mr. Johnny's going to 
to be here, Miss Dulcie. Of course he's going to be here. He's been away from me for almost two years. I know how he feels. Mm, looks like he should call or something. Will you stop worrying? Just tell me how I look. Oh, you look gorgeous, Miss Dulcie. Oh, what the hell could be keeping him anyway? He should have been here by now. He's here! I told you so. Let him in. Yes, ma'am. No, dear. Just the same old Mark. Checking my welcome now that Johnny's back. Where is he? Is he all right? Well, as far as I'm concerned, he is. He's taking my sister to dinner. Well, let's not stand here wasting any more time talking about Johnny. Are you taking me to dinner? Johnny's a fool, Dulcie. And now that you know how things are with him, maybe you can pay some attention to how I feel about you. Because for me, there's no woman in the world like you. I've always felt that way about you, Johnny. Why do you think I never married the doctor? Kind of wondering about that myself. I, I suppose it might be easier if I played coy or lied. But I love you, Johnny. I've loved you ever since the first night you came into our lives. Does that make you uncomfortable? No. It makes me feel like it's something I ought to be worthy of. Nonsense. You are. We could have a good life together, Johnny. Home, children, everything you thought about when you were away. Maybe you don't feel quite the same way about me now, but I can make you happy. I know I can. Just give me a chance. Give us a chance. You're very lovely, Doris. Absolutely lovely. Thank you, Curly. As you know, there's nothing too good for my daughter. Well, there's nothing too good for my readers, either. They'll want to know every detail, every little tid and bit. Anything you want. Oh, you're wonderful, darling. Have you met my secretary, Wally? How do you do? I'll send you in Murray. He'll get you whatever you want. Oh, thank you, darling. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Ashley, why don't you at least talk to Coralie? Look, why do I always have to talk to that dreary woman? Because you're a star and she's a great columnist. We need her. I don't need her. That's what I said. You don't need her. We need her. The studio needs her. Murray, don't talk to Carly. PJ, what a great idea. <laughs> Come, we'll talk to Carly. No, 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 thank you. Ah, thank you very much. You're very good. Oh. George! Are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> it's a wonderful party, dear. Thank you. Hey, you make good match, eh? Johnny's smart boy. So? They'll make good children. <laughs> I hope so, eh? Tell me, George, how many theaters you got now? 300. And now I buy Atlantic chain. 60 more. Be careful. Don't overextend yourself. Why? Movies is going out of style? <laughs> <laughs> about the business, the women are getting more beautiful every year. 
They're a little too old for me. Girls, I'm hungry, honey. Hungry? At a wedding? Have you no romance in your soul? Stuck, you stuck? Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. <laughs> Now, you take that brunette there dancing with Zach. Now, that's a lady to get acquainted with. That's my girlfriend. She is? Yeah. Well, Joe, you better keep an eye on her. You know, that cow will bring out the mother in them. Maybe you're right. Now, now, listen, don't you do a thing. And don't worry. I'm gonna go there and take care of it for you. Okay? Thanks, Connie. Zach? Yeah, that's with the lady? Sure. Thank you. Shall we? Esther, stop worrying. They'll be happy. Because you say they'll be? It takes two to make a marriage, and it's, it's hard enough when both people are crazy about each other. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. It'll be all right. Well, what do you think? Could you become used to living in a house like this? How will that happen? Edges out foxed you marrying the boss's daughter. He married the boss's daughter, not the boss. Caviar? Thank you. Peter! Esther! Johnny! I think it's time we had a drink together. Thank you. To a dozen grandchildren. Oh, right. Johnny, be good to her. She's precious to me. Yeah, to me, Peter. Excuse me. I have to talk to you. All of you. Well, talk. In private. Can we go into the solarium? want to steal Johnny and Doris' thunder, so we didn't say anything. We? Yes. Dulcie and I got married yesterday. It's a joke, right? Peter. Marky. Why? Why? Yes. Why does anyone get married, Mama? I'm crazy about her. Are you trying to kill me? Are you trying to kill me? Didn't you hear me? I said I love her. You fool. She didn't marry you. She married Magnum to help her career. That's all you know, isn't it? You can't imagine that I'm anything but your son. Get out of my house. Peter. I never want to see your face again. And you can tell that wife of yours that she'll never work at Magnum again or any other studio. Then we'll see how long this marriage lasts. Peter, this is your son. My son. Yes. He's a disgrace. No. At least Johnny had the sense not to marry her. Damn you! No! no. 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 Stop! Peter, please! No, don't! Esther, get him out of here. Please, get him out. Get out. Please, get him out. Tell anyone who says a word against her. Get out of my house. Oh, Peter, please. Get out of my house. Peter, please. Get out of my house. Get a hold of yourself, Mark. Grace. And you. Remember. She's my wife now. And don't you ever forget it. Johnny, I've been looking for you. Somebody wants to see you. I'll make you regret this. I promise you that.
Please pass to me, you sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one, the gun dialogue. Where would you like to spoon? Damn it, Joe, why does it keep going off like that? One of the motors keeps slowing down. What the hell's wrong with it? Johnny, if it's not the one that drives the turntable for sound, then it's the one for the picture. Maybe our whole approach is wrong, trying to put sound on a phonograph record. Well, Axel, why don't you tell that to the Warner Brothers? This is the system they've been working on. I heard yesterday that Fox paid a million dollars for a new German system, one where the sound goes right on a film. So what? That doesn't prove which system is better. Only that everyone in this business is interested in talking pictures except for Peter Kessler. Oh, I'm late for my kid's birthday party. Look, Joe, Axel, I don't care what you guys have to do, just get this thing to work. <laughs> Are you sure you're in the right house, mister? I'm sorry. I'll explain later. Where's Bobby? He's in the solarium. Hey, Bobby! Hey, look at me! Wow! I never had one of those. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you like it. Sorry I'm late. Didn't realize the time. Well, realize it, Johnny. You're missing the best part of your life. Johnny, what kept you? The party's almost over. I was with Joe and Axel. Oh, you should have seen it. We actually had the sound and the picture in sync for 20 seconds. You're wasting your time and the company's money. Pictures are made to be seen, not heard. Peter, audiences are looking for something new. And talking pictures might be the answer. The answer is good pictures, not talking pictures. Why don't you two argue about this later? I think Johnny should say hello to his guests. Can you meet each other a little bit later? Mm-hmm. Good. Careful, careful. Your wife is watching. Yes, uh, she always is. Mm -hmm. Coralie, sweetheart, why don't we go over and talk to Astrid James? She has so much to tell you about her new picture, The Flapper. Directed by Conrad Stillman, no doubt. Well, of course, she depends on him. Oh, so I hear for everything. Astra, darling, Conrad. We were just talking about you two. Yes, I bet. <laughs> well, what are you two doing here? Aren't you supposed to be shooting a picture someplace? We are shooting a picture. Oh. Peter wants us to be here to celebrate Bobby's birthday, that's all. <laughs> you know Peter, <laughs> he's all hard. <laughs> Why don't all of you talk a little bit about the picture, of course, and I'll see you later. Ta -ta. Mm -hmm. Where's your lovely wife? My wife? Mm -hmm. Well, she's right here. You know very well I never go any place without her. She's right there. You girls talk to each other. I'll see you later. Isn't this rather a tame party for you two? Oh, Coralie, how can you say that? you think you've had enough? What else am I supposed to do? You bring me to a party and spend all your time with that actress. Oh, Helen, for goodness sake. You are making a picture together. We were discussing a scene. Then do it on the set. You're humiliating me. And you are boring me. Your jealousy and your drinking bore me. Don't push me, Connie. I'll be home late. I'm working tonight. And don't drink anymore. I know this isn't the time or the place, but that was a test. Oh, fantastic, Bruce. Fantastic. Well, how was his voice? It's a little high-pitched. Oh. You mean a little high-pitched? <laughs> Just a little high-pitched. Just a little high-pitched. Well, we're working on it. Oh, good. Johnny, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, Esther. Have you heard anything about Mark lately? <laughs> no. No, I haven't. But our Paris office informs us that Dulcie's latest picture is a big hit. Mark's done quite a job making her a big star in Europe. Do you think you could talk to Peter and, and find a way to bring Mark back home? I miss my son, Johnny. I know how you feel. But Peter's not the easiest man to talk to these days. 
I still can't believe it. A beautiful young woman in her prime, and a man like Conrad Stillman, a genius, gone like that. Very tragic. Ah, the nights that Stillman and I sat in this office till two or three in the morning, planning films, exchanging ideas, dreaming, pictures that we made. Well, he did his best work with you, PJ. Those films will be a monument to him. Oh, yes. A scandal like this one can put us out of business, Peter. Well, it's still publicity, even though it's bad. Forget publicity. We've got a studio to run and a payroll to meet. Johnny's right. Farnham, how far are we into production with the flapper? Far enough to have cost us a fortune. We don't have enough footage to finish the picture without Astrid. We'll have to write it off. Well, we just can't dump it, can we? After all, it's our lead up for next year's program. Who is talking about dumping it? We'll get a new director? We'll recast it and get back into production as soon as we can. You see, that's what I like about Johnny. He fights back. That's how we got where we are. Murray, I want you to put out a release of the papers. Within the next few days, I will announce a new star and a director for the flapper. Right, PJ. Who'd you have in mind? How about Clara Bow? Uh-uh. Tied up at Paramount. Swanson. We can't touch her. She'd want half the studio. Well, what about that little girl at Metro? You know, uh, the one who does the Charleston. Uh, Joan Crawford? Yes. Oh, she'd be great, but uh, they'll never let her go. Well, there must be someone. Do you mind if I make a suggestion, PJ? Go right ahead, Larry. What about uh, Dulcie Warren? I mean, she's a big star in Europe, and she'd be perfect for this part. I don't want to hear her name mentioned. It's good business, Peter. I don't care if she is. I won't have her here. Johnny, you agree with me, don't you? I don't know, Peter. Murray's got an idea. Maybe a good one. She's an interesting personality, and she'd be good in the flapper. If you gentlemen don't mind, I'd like to have a word with Johnny. Well, whoever you decide, PJ, rest assured, I'll get her name in the papers. <laughs> Are you sure you want her back after what she put you through? It was a long time ago, Peter. People change. They mature. And we are in a tight spot. I don't like it. She's no good. And I certainly will not beg her to come back. Don't beg her. Make it a straight business proposition. Offer her the part on that basis. And it'll bring Mark home. That'll make Esther happy. Good salesman, Johnny. I hope you're not selling yourself a bill of goods.
Coupé, coupé. Oh, c'était merveilleux, c'était merveilleux, merveilleux, Dieu aussi. On a cinq minutes, mais on va changer la scène. On met la caméra là-bas. Oui, oui. Tu as tout pris, hein. Tu as tout, tout bien, hein. Et alors, euh, viens, viens ici, on va... Well, what did you think? How was it? He's missing a close-up. The picture should fade out on you. Well, will you tell the director that I'm tired of arguing with him? I will, in a minute. Pardonnez-moi, s'il vous plaît. I have something I want you to read first. Oh, Mark, can't you just tell me what it says? It's from California. They want us to come back. Well, well, well. It will be a pleasure to tell them what to do with their picture. Hmm, I'm not so sure that's what I want to say. What do we need them for? They threw us out, treated us like dirt. Tried to ruin your career. Oh, Mark, we've been gone so long. My fans in America should get a chance to see me. Things are fine the way they are. Look, we've got to go home eventually. I've come as far as I can in Europe, and, well, besides, you should stop and think about yourself. By all rights, Magnum should belong to you someday. We could go back now on our own terms. You could stake your claim for what's rightfully yours. Maybe you're right. I love you. already in 10 minutes. Uh, you know, actress is PJ. She's got to make an entrance. Johnny, why have Dulcie and your brother-in-law stayed away from Hollywood so long? Business. Must have been serious business. Well, all business is serious, Coralie. You know that. Except monkey business. <laughs> have you met my new secretary, Eddie? No. Oh, Vera, do you know Eddie? Mm, I've known Eddie for years. Doris, mixed feelings? No. My brother's coming home, and so is his wife. Mama, if I still had questions about Dolphy, I'd, I'd have never married Johnny. Did he ask how you felt about bringing her back to Hollywood? Yes. Well, what did you say? That I thought it was a good idea. What else could I say? <laughs> Warren, how does it feel to be back in Hollywood? Terrific, thank you. Yes, of course. He looks wonderful, Peter. Anything for the studio, huh, Park? Well, he's... Five back, Park. You hear that? They love her. The girl you fired. You did a good job, Mark. Well, all I needed was to get away from you, Pop. There you go. <laughs> sure. Hello, Dulcie. Johnny. Welcome home. I like the mustache. Very attractive. Thank you. Well, what do you think after all these years? I think that all these people are saying it for me. You used to be able to speak for yourself. Excuse me. Dulcie, darling. Murray! Hey, you look wonderful. <laughs> you remember Coralie? Of course, Coralie. Hello, Dulcie, darling. <laughs> Excuse me, please, but I would like the family to take a picture with Dulcie. Come, right this way. Oh, I'll see you at the studio, Excuse dear. Excuse me, everybody. Oh. Coralie, I'll see you in a minute. Please, family, you'll all gather around Dulcie, right? At all of them. That'll be fine, and I'll get the photographer. Dulcie? Mr. Kessler? It's nice to have you back. Nice of you to say that. Welcome back, Dulcie. I hope we can become good friends. I'm sure we will. After all, we have so much in common. What is it, Lucy? Mr. Radford calling from New York. Okay, thanks. Good morning, Mr. Radford. Mr. Edge, we are seriously concerned here at the bank about Magnum. It appears your account is 
overdrawn. Overdrawn? Yes. When did this happen? Well, it's been going on for some time, but in the last few weeks, it's become quite acute. Well, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. I'll look into it. We'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Good day. Bye. Very gratifying, Monsignor. Your films have inspired people from all over the world, Mr. Kessler. They remind us that there's something in man that raises him above the animals. Thank you, Monsignor. Mr. Kessler. Vera, see how the Monsignor gets a tour of the studio. Certainly, Mr. Kessler. Right this way, Monsignor. Mr. Kessler, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Kessler. Do you have a moment to look at this? Why, certainly, Marcel. Come in. Come in. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Johnny! Johnny, look. Relax a lot. Yeah, I've seen it. Well, what do you think? It'll cost $30,000. Doug Fairbanks has a set he made for Robin Hood. We can rent it for next to nothing. Peter J. Kessler does not use secondhand sets. Why do you think I get awards, commendations? Magnum was built on quality. Quality does not mean waste. Put it in work. Peter, I just had a call from Radford, New York. We are seriously overdrawn. I know, I know. You know! What difference does it make? Vera, tell Farnham I want to talk to him. Peter, you cannot play games with people like Radford. So? What's he going to do? Foreclose? Buy a man like him? Harvard Business School? Where do you think they learned how to foreclose? Peter, you want to see me? Yes, Farnham, come in. How are we doing on the European situation? Well, it's all set. You see? You can relax. Magnum has all the money it needs. What European situation? I sold off the European rights to next year's product. And what kind of a discount did you have to give them to pull that one off? Uh, 25%. 25%? And what are we supposed to do for a payroll some months down the line? There is nothing to worry about as long as my pictures keep making money. Only they cost more than they make. Cost! Cost! What are we talking about here? Nickels and dimes or quality? I will not jeopardize my reputation by making garbage. Don't you ever forget that. I don't have to listen to this. I'm going down to the set. Peter J. Kessler will never be a businessman, John. You should know that by now. Yeah. Listen, uh, I'm supposed to go to New York next week. Let me talk to some people. See if I can help. Yeah. Okay. You sure you know what you're talking about? John Edge and Peter Kessler have been at each other's throats for months. It's time to move. Charles. I wouldn't want to make any mistakes, Henry. Didn't Edge and Peter Kessler start out together? Yes, they did, but the bloom is off the marriage. If you want further corroboration, ask Vera. Mr. Slade, I'd think about this very carefully if I were you. Now, there are many more studios in Hollywood, more vulnerable than Magnum. The managements are frightened of sound, and they're all overextended. I want Magnum. But why? This is more than business, Radford. It's an old score. Peter Kessler is one of the men that broke the combine. I want his studio. She sure has sex appeal, hasn't she? 
Doesn't she do anything for you, Mr. Edge? Huh? Yeah. She's very good. Keep your knees in, Bobby. Like this, Uncle Jack? That's right. Don't pull his head up. Am I doing good, Uncle Jack? You bet. You're doing just fine. Come on, Bandit. Giddy up. Come on, Bandit. Great morning. You should have joined us. I wish I had. Mom, did you see? I certainly did. You were great. Can I show Uncle Jack? Can I walk him by myself? Can I? Just don't gallop him. Not till I tell you. Sure, I never fall riding, buddy. All right, you take on off. Then. Be careful. Oh. Great kids you got there. Yes, I know. I love this ranch. Well, heck, this ain't no ranch. It's just walking room. You see the one in New Mexico. Hmm. He worships you, you know. How am I doing with his mom? Zach, come on. Well, it's about time we talked about it. I don't think there's anything to talk about. Heck, there ain't. I ain't going to spend the rest of my life just hanging around. Zach, I appreciate the attention you've given to Bobby. You know that. He can hire a hundred cowboys, teach him how to ride. All right, I admit it. I'm grateful for the attention you've shown me. I'd like to do a heck of a lot more for you. This conversation's getting a bit risky. Well, just tell me, then, that uh, you don't care about me. I care. I do care. That's where it ends. Why? Well, like they say, I'm a married woman. Seems like a pretty part-time marriage to me. That's a hell of a remark. Well, am I wrong? Johnny spends 20 hours a day at the studio. You stay home waiting for him. Now, that's not a life. Not for a woman like you. You're a young, warm-blooded woman. You're living half a life. Any way you look at that, that is a waste. Bobby! Bobby, come on, it's time to come home. Hey. Hi, darling. What brings you here? I have to talk to you. All right. Sit down, let's talk. You know, this all sounds very serious, Doris. It is serious, Johnny. All right. What's on your mind? A man made a pass at me today. I was tempted to respond. Zach? He cares a great deal about me, Johnny. He's got time for me. That doesn't even make you angry, does it? But then you have left us wide open for this sort of thing, haven't you? Doris, I trust you. Don't. I am just growing old waiting for you. Do you know what it's been like around here for the past few weeks? We have had nothing but trouble. Johnny, we've got to stop missing each other. We're drifting apart. I love you too much to give up without at least a fight. Doris, I love you too. All I can tell you is that you are the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, then let's try to forget the past. Let's act like we just got married again. Let's try to recapture that feeling we had on our honeymoon. Remember? Yeah. I wish we could. We can. We can go away this weekend to that little hotel in Santa Barbara. Oh, the one with the fireplace in the bedroom. <laughs> you loved it. We had the best time. Can we go there again, please? Lady, you have got yourself a date. <laughs> All right, Joe, start cranking. Speed! Music!
That's a print. Very good, though. Wonderful, though. Exactly what we wanted. Good. Mr. Edge, would you like a chair, sir? Uh, no, thanks, Jerry. I'm just leaving. Hello, John. Hello. It's good to see you. Please come over. You remember Charles Slade? I see you again, Ed. Sit down. I, uh, wondered what happened to you after the combine folded. I, uh, went into the money business. <laughs> Best business to be in. I've been, uh, watching your career, Edge. Congratulations. Have you ever thought about going into business for yourself? I'm doing just fine where I am, thanks. From what I've been told, uh, Peter Kessler's extravagance is uh, putting him in a bad way with his creditors. What are you getting at? I came out to California for a reason. I want to put you in Kessler's job. Your own studio, John. No Kessler to answer to. How do we go about it? Well, we uh, persuade uh, Kessler to relieve the pressure by getting a new loan and putting his own stock up as collateral. I pick it up, call for a shareholders meeting, and uh, vote him out. Mr. Slade, how do you feel about all this? Well, I, I feel that uh, you running Magnum, the studio will be back on a solid basis again. No, no. I'm talking about the moral aspects. Well, that, that's not my concern. Uh, my interest is uh, purely business, Edge. Now, uh, what do you say? I say that it stinks. You've got 10% of Magnum. The way it's going now, do you want to lose it? Farnham, you can make one more trip through the Magnum gate. And that's to put your resignation on my desk. You're crazy. This is your chance. Everybody knows that you and Kessler fight like cats and dogs. That's the way it is with a family business. Lots of screaming and yelling. And a lot of love. Goodbye, Mr. Slade. Sorry to have to miss out on lunch. I was positive. He was ready. I staked my life on it. Relax, Farnham. More than one way to take over a company. You fired Farnham without consulting me? That's exactly what I did. Why? Because he wants to take over Magnum and throw you out on your ear. Ridiculous. Why did you hear that? When he and Charles Slade offered me your job. Slade? Slade. He and Farnham are still? Like this, Peter. And they hate your guts. Look, Farnham told them our credit's shaky. And it is, Peter. We've got to economize. We've got to cancel million dollar pictures. Stop all this extravagant spending. Spending for quality. That's how I built Magnum. You know, listen to me. That's how you're going to lose Magnum. Really? And who would I lose it to? You? Don't you ever accuse me of scheming against you. I told you what you had to do. You don't want to listen to me. That's fine. Tell me to get out. But if I do, I will join Farnum and Slade. That's blackmail. You bet. Plain and simple, Peter. Can you excuse us for a second? Certainly. I don't have any secrets about Stay. All right, maybe it's better we did have a witness. From now on, Peter, you're not going to be making any more big costume dramas. No more million dollar epics. You're sticking to bread and butter pictures. Are you going to dictate to me how I should run my business? You're damn right I am. Until you realize that the more you spend, the more you're gonna have to borrow. And the more you have to borrow, the more vulnerable we're gonna be to a takeover. And I don't plan to stand around and watch that happen. Carry your cold. Try tea and honey.
I gave that boy a start in the business. Now he's trying to push me out. Thank you, Sarah. We'd love to have dinner with you, but not tonight. Johnny and I are sneaking off to Santa Barbara for the weekend. Of course, just the two of us. Oh, I gotta run. My man just got home. I'll talk to you later. Hello, sweetheart. Hi. Hey. You've got five minutes to wash your face, then we hit the road. On second thought, don't even bother to wash your face. Hit the road? Don't tell me you forgot. It has been a rough day. Johnny, if I weren't so thick-skinned, I might be a little insulted. Oh, no. Uh, Santa Barbara. Well, at least you got it right on the first try. I'm packed, you're packed. Whenever my lord wishes, we're off. Doris, listen. I've had to call an emergency meeting tonight. All the department heads. You what? I told you, it's been a rough day. Farnham and Slater. I don't want to hear about it. I have got a major crisis on my hand. Your father... I told you, I don't want to hear about it. You promised me this weekend I've been waiting for it, dreaming about it, planning all the little moments. There will be other weekends, Doris. Don't be too sure about that. Hi, Pop. Good bit, son. Feeling any better? A little. You wanted to talk to me? Yes, Mark. Sit down. I want you to do something for me. You heard? Farnham is out. Yeah, it's all over the studio. What happened? It's a long story. Not important. Mark. I know I haven't always treated you like I should. But I ask you, led by guns, be by guns. I want you to go to New York, Boston, the Midwest. Get acquainted with the exchanges. Talk to the exhibitors. Learn everything there is to know about Magna. Why? One day, you're going to have to take over the whole studio. What about Johnny? Johnny. Johnny's a son-in-law. You're my flesh and blood. Will you do it for me? How could I resist? I'll leave just as soon as Dulcie's picture's finished. Don't wait. Go now. This trouble with Farnham could cause uncertainty. I still have to talk it over with Dulcie. Okay. Mark. We're father and son again, huh? Employer and employee. I was hoping for something more. Who knows, Pop? Give it time. Take care of yourself. It doesn't matter. What time is it? It's late. It's a rough meeting. It's been a rough night. Doris, I'm sorry. Johnny, I knew when I married you that making movies was your first love. I thought I could live with it. But lately, it's getting to be too much. I can't take it anymore. You love your job more than you love me. Doris, all that I ask is that you try to understand what I'm going through with your father. I am worried about the future. To hell with the future. I'm worried about the present. I'm trying to have a life today. We never see each other. We never talk. Sex is a thing of the past. Hey, hey. You do not have to go all the way to Santa Barbara to... Don't touch me. Hey! I mean it. Don't touch me. I said I was sorry. That's a big help. 
You have hurt me over and over again. Now you expect me to fly into your arms just because you feel like it? Doris, I love you. Johnny, I cannot be your wife on occasion. I can't suddenly turn on the passion just because your damn schedule allows for it. That's not fair. Look, Johnny, if I were you, I'd just go read a script, okay? Is that the way you want it? Yeah, that's what I want. I'll tell you what! You got it, Mrs. Edge! <laughs> since I saw you come in. Aren't you going to say anything? About the picture? You're marvelous. No. About us. Mark's in New York, Johnny. I persuaded him to go. Look, Dulcie. A lot of years have passed. We're not kids anymore. We're both married. We have responsibilities. Are you trying to convince me? Or yourself? Oh, come on, Johnny. I've seen you on the set, standing in the background, watching me. Waiting. Wanting me. Come on, I'll walk in your car. Not yet. Stay here, Thelma. <laughs> Mike, where's the girl? She's over there with her parents. They talk to anybody? No, oh, we've all been waiting for you, Johnny. Do you know how old she is? I didn't do anything. You were in here alone with her. They are out there screaming statutory rape. That's ten years in prison. You are needed on the set. Come on. <laughs> you have a mom over this way. Here you go. Mr. and Mrs. Humber? Yes? I'm Johnny Edge. 
What can I say? I'm shocked. It was a terrible thing he did to our little girl, Mr. Edge. Have you called the doctor? No, we wanted to see you first. How old are you, dear? Fourteen. You know, the law requires the studio to have a tutor on set for minors. You can lodge a complaint with the authorities. Oh, there's no need to lodge a complaint about anything. There's nothing to be gained by ruining a fine actor like Mr. Benton. You know, Mr. Benton's career is worth a great deal to Magna Pictures. How much would you say it would cost to keep it that way? $100,000. Mike, can you come here a minute? Excuse me, please. Mike, I'm about to make a deal with these folks. I'd like you to witness. All right, fine. Now, how much uh, did you say it would cost to forget about Mr. Benton's alleged misconduct with your daughter? Uh, 100000 Call the DA's office. I'm charging them with attempted extortion. What? What are you trying to pull? I'm going to go to the cops. I wish you would. I'd love to get a look at your daughter's birth certificate and your police record. You haven't heard the last of this. I hope not. I'd like to see both you and your wife in jail. And you. Why don't you cut off those curls and be your age? Now, are you going to get out of here? Do I make that call? Come on, Papa. Let's get the hell out of here. How did you know it was a pony? I didn't. All right, everybody. Stand by. Here we go. Well? It's all right. It was set up. Right. <sighs> fool. Poor, pathetic, frightened fool. Young girls are his problem, Thelma. You know that. I know. I took him away from an older woman. I suppose someday someone will do it to me. Not you. He loves you too much. It's sweet. <sighs> Doris is a lucky girl. Johnny! Well, I got a nice roast chicken for you in the oven. There's a special bottle of wine. Oh, and don't forget to uh, lock the door when you leave. Thanks, Rocco. I hope you know what you're doing, pal. Not sure that I do. Then why the hell are you doing it? Johnny. You got a lot to lose. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of dames in this town. Rocco, have I ever gone after one of them? No. Why this one? I don't know. Something about her. I just can't seem to help myself. Okay. Okay, no more lectures. Thanks for everything, Rock. Sure. Better get out of here. You got yourself an illegitimate business to run. <laughs> you take care now. Yeah. each other. Thank you, thank you, Sammy, very good. 
How was it? You lost the sound. Oh, oh, oh that's yeah. so fix it already. Damn it, Joey, you said you had worked out. Let's get out of here, George. Stay alive, we'll do back to the system. We well, gotta do it again. No, no, I don't want to know what it is. Everybody stay put. Touch my hands and waste money on that. Johnny's right, Peter. You too? Of course. Listen to me, I came here to line up talking pictures. Why don't you make them for me? Nobody will want to see them. How can you say a thing like that? Have you heard about the lines in front of the jazz singer? So, Jolson sang a song. What should I do, get goosebumps? How many pictures a year can Warners make with him? It's not only Jolson. Today, the public wants talking pictures. I'm so sure that I'm going to hard to convert all my theaters to sound. You're making a mistake, George. A terrible mistake. It's a passing fancy. I only hope you're not too late. And I'm not too soon. Yes, I have. Ninety percent of what you said was true. But it's the other ten percent that really matters. Meaning what? Meaning that I love Johnny. I could never cheat on him. I guess at heart I'm an old-fashioned girl. I take marriage very seriously. Johnny must be quite a guy to have a woman like you. out on a party? The house is lit up like the 4th of July. Where have you been? We've been calling all over town looking for you since 5 this afternoon. I had a early dinner with a few distributors and then put them on a train. Don't you tell your secretary where you're going when you leave the office? Yeah, I thought I did. Why? What's wrong? Bobby had an accident at Zach's ranch. We rushed him to the hospital. For a while, they thought he might have a fractured skull. Oh, no. He's all right now. Well, where is he? He's upstairs asleep. The doctor gave him a sedative. Aren't you going to get some sleep tonight? I can't forgive myself for not being here. Look at him, Doris. You know, I just realized how little time I've spent with Bobby. How little time I've spent with you. I've always been too busy. I've always been tied up at the studio. I don't want to live like that anymore, Doris. Will you help me? I'll always be here, Johnny.
Where were you yesterday? I waited at Rocco's house for hours. I was at home, doing some thinking. What about? Lots of things. My son, my marriage. What brought that on? You hear about Bobby? Yeah. I sent him a teddy bear. Yeah, that's what I used to do. Instead of being there myself. Johnny, what's gotten into you anyway? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about years I've missed. Years that can never be repeated. Then forget about them. Look, what's important is right now, us. It's no good, Dulcie. I can't handle two lives. What happened? Mommy and Daddy get together over the kid? He's our son. We both love him. That's very touching. But what about us? Why should I worry about them? Johnny, you're mine now. Oh, you haven't changed, have you? You don't care about anybody but yourself. Damn right! I've spent seven years of my life, seven miserable years, married to a man I don't love just because you married Doris. Now, I'm not going to let her stand in my way ever again. Not her, not that kid, not anybody. I'm sorry I ever had anything to do with you. And you think you can drop me again, just like that? I'm going to hold on to you this time until I call it quits. I don't know when that'll be. But it isn't right now. I'll make you beg for the next one. There won't be a next one, Dulcie. We'll see. How long has this been going on? I don't know. The detective reports start about four weeks ago. Who well, sent these to us? Well, I don't know that either. They came anonymously. I can't figure out whether someone's trying to help us or planning to blackmail us. It doesn't matter. Tell my son why I want to see him. At once. Yes, Mr. Kessler. Yeah, Peter, what do you want? Look, you dare deny it? How could you do this? How could you do this to me? I took you to my home. I made you part of my family. I gave you my daughter for a wife. Where'd you get these? What difference does it make? Oh, listen to me. Don't say anything. Your home, your family. I thought that was something I could count on. And you dirtied it. You spoiled it. Wait a minute. All you keep talking about is what I've done to you. You don't care about how I hurt Doris or Bobby. Get out. You've been nothing but trouble to me anyway. Why? Because I've tried to save you from your own stupidity? Get out! Get out of Magnum! I wouldn't put it past you that you only marry my daughter so you can get my studio. If that's what you think after all of these years, then the hell with you. I don't want to have anything to do with you or your studio. You can have my 10% of Magnum. It'll be on your desk in the morning. Here's a nickel I owe you. Thanks for the movie. Clear the set. I said clear the set! We're just about to shoot, Mr. Kessler. I don't care about the shot. I want everybody off the set. Yes, sir. You heard the boss. Everybody off the stage. Now, move it. Come on. Come on. He's mad. You, stay. Why, Father Kessler? Something wrong? I want to talk to you. You cheap trap. You can't talk to me like that. 
I'll talk to you any way I like, and you listen. I know all about you and Johnny. Mark is never going to find out. You and I are going to see to that. And one of the ways we're going to do it is that you're going to give him a child. You're out of your mind. Stand still when I talk to you! My son is going to run the studio, and you're going to settle down and behave like a mother and a wife. As soon as this picture's finished, you will get pregnant. And what if I don't? What will you do to me? Fire me like you did seven years ago? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll renew your contract year after year, and you can sit by your phone and wait for the studio to call. Because I'll see to it that you will never walk in front of a camera again. I'll keep your face off the screen until you're too old to play a scrub woman. That's all there is to it. I just wanted to tell you how it all happened and for you to hear it from me first. I can't believe it. Maybe I just don't want to believe it. What I don't understand is... Oh, I can feel so much pain. We were having problems. Are you blaming me for something you've done? No. No, of course not. Just don't judge me. Will you try to understand? It was like an illness. Bobby's accident just broke the fever. But it's over. It's finished. Is that supposed to be music to my ears? What do you want from me, Johnny? Congratulations. Is that what you want? I want you. And I want Bobby. Too late for that. For years, I have been trying desperately to hold on to our marriage. You just cut the rope. Doris, look. We have been through so much together. Ever since we were just kids in Albany. You can't let something like this just destroy it. I can't help it. I feel so hurt. I'll get a few things together and uh, leave. biggest stars, the greatest directors, and the finest writers. And no expenses spared on sets or costumes. My father and I are planning a program of the finest pictures the world has ever seen. We've got five scripts ready to go into production right away. All silent. Does the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel talk? Mr. Kessler, you're asking for millions. Your line of credit is already overextended. I don't feel I can recommend this to my board without substantially increased collateral. We'd anticipated that. I'm prepared to put up my stock as much as necessary. You're willing to risk your control of Magnum? Risk? What risk? I'm Peter J. Kessler. What can go wrong? All right, I'll clear it with my board. Thank you. Larry, it's always a pleasure doing business with you. Anything you need while you're here, just ask. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Radford. Good day. See you, Larry. Yes, please. Operator, this is Lawrence Radford. I want to speak to New York. Hello. Yes, put him on. Henry, he's ready to pledge his stock. That's good news. 
Call me when you get in. Right. I got him. Long wait. But it was worth it. Bruce, it's a great story, and you're perfect for the part. You'll be fantastic in talkies. Just read the script. Charlie, I'm flattered. But you know I'm on the contract of Magnum. It expires next month, just in time for us to start. But I practically given to my word I was going to re-sign. I just can't walk away from that. Without you, I'm going to have a rough time raising money for the picture. Peter's got the word out on you. Nobody will touch you. Didn't you know? Yeah, I'd heard something about it. I'm sorry, Johnny. How can you turn your back on Johnny after all that he's done for you? Now, leave him alone, Thelma. He's just playing a small part in Peter's scenario. Hey, Bruce. Make a talkie for someone. They're the future, pal. Sit down, take a seat. Your office told me I might find you down here. What are you doing, counting the house? <laughs> I like to listen to him when he practices. It's like a private concert. I got 1,500 movie houses like this, all with papas out in front. You know that? Not bad for a Greek who still don't speak English, eh? You've done great, George. And I just put a fortune to wiring them all for sale. Peter better get smart. Talkies is what the peoples want nowadays. Got one ready for production right now. I know, Johnny, I know. I, uh, I got your letter. I, you didn't have to come all the way from California. I send you a check in return mail if I got a dime I can lend you. I thought you were out of the woods. Didn't you get refinanced? Sure. I hired your friend, Mr. Farnham, as my treasurer. Big help got me all kinds of money. Now he and his friends got the hands on my neck. From selling hot dogs to this. My life, Johnny. My life. Hey, that's some organ, ain't it? I got a deal with the guy. When I croak, he's gonna play at my wake. Thirty dollars an hour. That's a lot. Uh, who cares? I finally stick my credit, is that? <laughs> you excuse me, Johnny. I got some business to take care of upstairs. You, uh, you stay and enjoy the music. George. Is there anything I can do? You think maybe you could turn the clock back? Mr. Farnham in. Yes, sir. He's waiting for you. Go right in. Thank you. Hello, George. Who's that? Bruce. <laughs> How are you, Bruce? Fine. So fine. you're making your personal appearance at my theater, eh? Ta da da. <laughs> I'm waiting to see Farnham. Have a seat. I won't be long. Good morning, George. Good morning. Everyone is uh, 
here as you requested. Thank you. This uh, notice of receivership. We got to talk about it, huh? There isn't really very much we can do, George. We've missed two rather substantial payments on the loan, and the bank is very upset. You want to take my theaters? Not me, it's the bank. The bank? Yes. You wanted all your theaters wired for sound. We gave you the money. And I made every payment. I mortgaged my house. I borrowed from my insurance. But you wait and see. Six months, maybe a year from now, I'll have all the talking pictures I need. I'll be on my feet again. The bank is not prepared to wait. The bank? The bank is the building. It's you, Mr. Redford, and you, Slade, who are not prepared to wait. You want all my theaters. We want to merge your theaters with a studio. Combine production and exhibition under one roof. It's just a matter of good business, Mr. Pappas. Business. Stealing. Stealing, that's what it is. If I were you, I'd watch my mouth. You're crooks, both of you. Crooks. All of you. You too, Farnham. You are all crooks. The next time you want to go into a Pappas theater, you'll have to buy a ticket. Want my pride too, huh? Excuse me, gentlemen. I gotta use your bathroom. I think I'm gonna be sick. Shot or something. No, I didn't hear anything. Mr. Landers. Yes, I am with Mr. Radford and Mr. Slade. We wish to sell Pappas theaters. Every share that we own personally. That's right. That's right now, before the end of the day. sad occasion. George Pappas was a fine man. Yes, he was. Mr. Edge, I hear you're looking for money to make your talking picture. That's right. Well, the First Bank of New York is willing to give you the money. I think you should know that I no longer have any Magnum stock to put up as security. Well, we're well aware of that. Actually, if we should give you the money, Magnum will be involved in our agreement. How so? At the next stockholders meeting, we want you to run for president of Magnum. Against Peter. And what makes you think you can win? Well, we've acquired a, a large block of his stock. With that and the proxies we've accumulated, he will be voted out. You're the best man for the job, Johnny. The stockholders will trust you. What do you say? I appreciate the offer. I need to think it over. 
You do that. And remember, you don't owe Peter Kessler anything. It was a great preview. And personally, I love the flapper. Only I'm wondering how long people will be willing to pay to see silent pictures. Well, I wouldn't bury silent pictures so soon, Carly. Oh, everyone is gearing up for talkie. Why, even your brother-in-law is about to produce one. Well, I'm betting he's wrong. Carly, come on. Talking pictures? That's like saying movies will be in color someday. Oh, now you're being ridiculous. Dulcie, dear, you don't look very festive. I imagine you're worried about talkies, too. Why do you say that? Well, I noticed there was no picture on the schedule for you. Are you thinking of retiring? Hardly. Dulcie's just taking some time off for her personal life. Isn't that right, dear? Even a movie star is entitled to that, don't you think? Domesticity? Oh, 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 your fans will be fascinated. Oh, are you planning on having little ones? We're working on it. Coralie, did you ever hear of anyone planning on having big ones? Murray, dear, would you mind going to the bar and getting me a drink? <laughs> I'd love it. night for me to drop by. Ah, they'll never see you back here. I'll have dinner sent in. Did you serve the customers? What, are you crazy? You want me to get rich, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So tell me, you, uh, did you make up your mind about the Radford offer? Can't turn it down, Rocco. I've got a stake in Magnum. It means as much to me as it does to Peter Kessler. Besides, I can't see letting strangers have it. Well, good luck. As to you, Mr. Magnum. <laughs> Excuse me, I think I'll powder my nose. Oh, of course, dear. Michael, why don't you come and sit over here? Have you met my new secretary, Michael? I figured I knew who was getting the special booze. Can I borrow your office and your friend for a minute? Sure. I gotta go count some money. I can't get you on the phone. You don't answer my letters. What would be the point, Dulcie? Johnny, if you ever loved me, help me now. Peter's trying to ruin my career. He's keeping me off the screen. What do you expect me to do about it? You're strong. You can stand up to him. You can put me in a picture. Then let Magnum sue us. We'll beat him in court. Boy, you figure every angle, don't you? Won't work. Johnny, I'm in my 30s. They're going to turn me into a matron. They'll have me playing Dull Housewives in second lead. Don't let them do this to me, please. I'm begging you. You're smart. You'll think of something. I'm sorry. I don't have any answers to this one. I guess all I can tell you is to go home. I wish that I could. Well, you said once we'd end up destroying each other. Maybe we have. Mark, I'm going back to Europe. Alone. What? I've been acting like a frightened child. Well, nobody tells me what to do. I'm Dulcie Warren, and I am not going to give up my career. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about our marriage. It's over. 
There's not going to be any staying at home. There's not going to be any babies. I don't understand. Well, I've got feelings, too, and I am tired of the lies. I'm tired of the threats. I'm leaving you. Oh, no, Dulcie. You're not going anyplace. You're not leaving me. We belong together. You know why? Because we're just alike. We're both losers. I am not a loser. I am a star. I'm famous all over the world. Audiences love me. Johnny doesn't. Surprised? I've known all along. About Johnny, Raoul, Duval, that writer in London. All of them. I wasn't even angry. What kind of man are you? I took you the way you are because I love you. They didn't. They just wanted you. And in time, the whole world's gonna forget all about you except me. Don't you ever say that. That's not true. They love me. Face it, darling. I'm all you've got. Well, I don't want you, and I don't want your love. I wish I'd never met you. I wish I'd never met any Cut of you. Out. Any of you. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Thank you. Poor Marquis. Life was never good to him. Peter, I want to say how very sorry I am. All right. You said it. Listen, we have spent too many years together not to be able to talk. Haven't you heard us enough? What more do you want? I want you to know how sorry I am for the way that everything has worked out. Remark. Dulcie, you, for all of us. But most of all, I want you to know that I am not your enemy. See you, Johnny. Hello, Doris. What are you doing here? Paying my respects. What, no amnesty? Not even for a day? You really think you deserve it? Seems to me this is a time to put all bitterness aside. How can I when I know what you're doing to my father? Doris, if I didn't run against him, someone else would. Don't rationalize it, Johnny. I didn't go looking for it. They came after me, Doris. Just like everything else came to you, right? Family, success, me. Let me tell you something, Johnny. Even after you left, there were days I couldn't bear to be without you. And the nights I cried for you. But now it's... Doris, understand that this has nothing to do with us. It's business. It's business. That word covers a multitude of sins, doesn't it? You used to be your own man, Johnny. That was something I loved about you. But now you're just like everybody else in this town. You had your price. Somebody paid it, that's all.
Johnny, aren't you going to say hello? Of course, Bruce. No hard feelings. How you doing? <sighs> Terrible thing. Terrible thing. First George Pappas, and now Mark and Dulcie. Yeah, it is. I'll never forget the last time I saw George. Morning he killed himself. Where was that? Going into Farnham's office. And you know, funny thing. I could have sworn I heard a shot just a very short time after he went in. A shot? Yeah. But I must be wrong, because they found his body the next day in the basement. Must have been a backfire from a car or something. Johnny, about your movie. You understand, don't you? Sure. I hope you make it. Thank you. The chair recognizes Mr. Henry Farnham. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all studied and now we have heard the yearly report of Magnum Pictures. There is only one possible conclusion. The company is on the verge of financial disaster. Therefore, by reason of gross inefficiencies in operations, reckless squandering of corporate funds, and a total lack of understanding of the most important advance in the history of motion pictures, the advent of sound. The dissident stockholders whom I represent and by whom I am empowered to vote demand a change in management. Right. Management, obviously, needs qualified, modern, Leadership. Fortunately, there is such a man available. We propose, as the next president of Magnum, the dynamic, young executive whose first talking picture is already in production, Mr. John Edge. And we call for a vote. Congratulations, Mr. President. I appreciate that, Vera, but I think it's a little premature. But I'll tell you, if I do get the job, you know what the first thing I'm going to do is? What? Fire you. I call for a recess. What do you want a recess for? Yeah, come on, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. This meeting stands adjourned for five minutes. I understand it. Something is wrong. John? Why call a recess? What are you doing? Answer me one question, Henry. Why did George Pappas choose to end his life in the basement of his own theater? He did, that's all. Uh-uh. George is a showman. He chose a place that would make a statement about why he died. Would point to the people responsible for it. You, you, and you. Oh, I think that's uncalled for. Last time he was seen alive, all three of you were with him. That's conjecture on your part. How would you know? Farnham's receptionist appointment book. He shot himself in your office. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, then the three of you got together, moved the body someplace where it wouldn't be found for a while, didn't you? Now, why in the world would we do a thing like that? Why do you do anything? To make money? To dump all your stock and pop the theaters and buy it back for less when the price fell? 
But you knew it would, as soon as the news of George's death came out. Where are you getting this from? Uh... From your stockbroker's office. They do keep records, you know. The first thing that's gonna happen when I blow the lid off of this, because you lied to the cops, is you'll all be suspected of killing George Pepper. Then you'll be charged with obstructing a police investigation. There's also the matter of improper trading in securities based on insider information. I want to know how you intend to prove all this. There are people that saw George Pappas walk into Farnham's office and never walk out. A short time later, they heard a shot. Now, the coroner's report places his death at about the same time. What do you want, Edge? Stock options? More money? Piece of the picture? I will tell you exactly what I want. This meeting will come to order. Mr. Chairman? You wish to speak, Mr. Edge? Yes, I do. The floor is yours, Mr. Edge. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we vote, let me say that it has always been my greatest ambition to head up Magnum Studios. Mr. Farnham charges that in a time of great change, Magnum Studios is being run by a man who is a stubborn, extravagant, and practical dreamer. <laughs> and he's right. I can swear to the truth of that statement. <laughs> yeah, Peter Kessler is all those things. Stubborn, impractical, extravagant. But he dreamed of entertaining a world in a way they never thought was possible. He dreamed that for a price of a nickel, lonely men and women could be transported to places they never imagined. He dreamed that for an hour or two, people could laugh and cry and experience fantastic adventure. Men like Peter Kessler created Hollywood. They took those dreams and they forged them into reality. Sure, they made mistakes. They didn't win all their gambles, but they built an industry, those dream merchants. Mr. Chairman, I hold in my hand the proxies of 530,000 shares of Magnum stock, and I ask you the privilege of casting the first vote. I vote that stock to retain Peter Kessler as president of Magnum Studios, and I urge you to do the same. What are you doing here, Johnny? Saying goodbye to the studio. Memories. This is where it all started, remember? Johnny, you could never say goodbye to Magnum, could you? I did once before when you fired me. I was wrong. I was wrong about many things. I suppose it was my pride. We all make mistakes. I want you to come back, Johnny. As president of that. What are you going to do? I'll retire. I don't know, Peter. I wouldn't want to even think about running Magnum without you. You still got the best taste in the business. I'll always be there when you need me. What do you say? Johnny. I want you to come back, too.
I didn't realize that all of this was your family, too, along with Bobby and me. I know that now. It's a part of your life. I guess I fell in love with the dream merchant. Well? Is it a deal? Here, a talking picture. <laughs> 